Hey what's up guys, we're back again with a Sparky deck that has blasted its way up to the top of the world. The rank 3 player in Clash Royale is using this Sparky deck to stay safe against all the bait cards in the meta while still having devastating damage potential. Whether it's all the rascals, spear goblins, or goblins in the meta, you're gonna have Dark Prince, Arrows, and Barbrill to finish them off swiftly. And when you're building up a gigantic push with Goblin Giant Sparky, there's nothing more scary than seeing Electro Dragon, Three Musketeers, or Archer Queen. They'll be powering down your push real fast, but with your abundance of splash damage to remove distractions and your lightning to pulverize all the high damage and reset cards that your opponent could potentially have, there'll be no need to worry and a lot to blast. It's time to make some gigantic strides up the ranks and shock some opponents. Let's get into some games and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Credit Kutzer Tag to make all the daily videos possible. All right, so jump into the game against Joe. We're gonna see what he's up to. Definitely gonna go for a bar barrel at the start of the match. And he's gonna go for a Lumberjack. So we wanna aggressively go in for a Sparky. That's a four elixir investment that he just wasted into our Sparky. Although I did drop two elixir on the left-hand side, I think that the push on the right-hand side is gonna be quite impactful for us since we're up two elixir. The guy's going to have Lumberjack, and he's also going to have Bowler. So, extrapolating a little bit, most people that have Lumberjack and Bowler are definitely going to end up having Lumberjack Balloon Freeze. So, if he goes in for, like, an Electro Dragon, as we saw, we could go in for Arrows to finish it off instead of Lightning Moon, because if you see the Goblin Giant is able to put in enough work, I think, to target the Electro Dragon down. If I Lightninged, we would got the similar outcome, but I would have way less Elixir on the defense. So, you always want to minimally spend Elixir if you can, and that's exactly what we roll with. I want to go in for a Dark Prince when the Bowler gets a bit closer to my tower, so it doesn't target on my tower, but it also doesn't start to target on my Dark Prince immediately. So, our dude's going to go in for a Lumberjack. I could Lightning on this. This is really risky, but I want to do it. Just because he doesn't have Barbrill in Cycle, we know that we're going to force out a Bowler again. And this time, if he goes in for a Bowler into a Phoenix, we're going to get a huge pause Elixir trade, because he's always going to have to respond to the Phoenix afterward. And if he goes in for a Balloon on the other side, well, I've got Hunter. So, I have excessive amount of ways of dealing with Balloon in this deck, and I'm comfy with whatever he's going to try to do to me. So, yeah, he's going to bloom. Kind of what we expected, right? If he decides to go in for a freeze, he's going to have to freeze on top of the hunter, the phoenix, and the tower, which isn't really feasible for him, right? So spacing out your stuff is the way to success with this deck. So the hunter's going to tank for the phoenix egg, forcing out a bar barrel as well, and the hunter gets a juice connection too. Let's go, baby. Remember, we know that our opponent is going to have Electro Dragon plus freeze in their deck. So definitely the way to win this is going to be using our Goblin Giant and then also our Dark Prince, but we can also go for a Sparky and then Lightning on top of the Electro Dragon if that's what his main source of damage and also his reset is going to be reliably for our Sparky. So I'm hoping that he tries to go for a cheesy Electro Dragon because he didn't see the fact that we have Lightning yet. And if I Lightning on top of his Electro Dragon, his Inferno Dragon, and then also his Lumberjack all at once, this could be game-ending damage. Oh, he went for a Freeze instead. That was a super smart strategy from him. We are going to be able to reset everything and then go in for Arrows afterward if we want. I can also go for a Dark Prince here, and I think that's going to be our best bet. The reason why I'm going Dark Prince on the other side is because I want to make sure that he's going to be forced to defend that. And if we are able to finish off all of his other stuff on the right-hand side, obviously, then the Dark Prince is going to give us the astronomical lead. And look at that. The Dark Prince is a win condition. We got his tower down to 2,400 health. You guys might be like, wait, you did so much damage in the right, but your measly Dark Prince did more in the left? That's how this deck works. You're able to do a dual lane pressure if you want. You can always go for a Sparky on one side and then go Goblin Giant on the other side and then Lightning on top of the building or whatever. A lot of cool things that you can do. For the Lightning to eviscerate the Inferno Dragon, I could go in for a Dark Prince again on the right-hand side. He just dropped his Lumberjack, and I don't know what he's going to do. Probably Tornado the Dark Prince into the Bowler. That's what I would try to do, maybe. I don't know. He's going to Inferno Dragon instead. Uh, interesting. <laughs> That's super cool, because look at the Phoenix. He's going to be able to destroy the Bowler, the Lumberjack, and then also put us in a position where I can comfortably defend on top of the Inferno Dragon by pulling it back with the Barbarian Barrel. And if he wants to go in for a Freeze, be my guest, you know that the Hunter will still finish everything off. Meanwhile, we can consistently go and apply pressure on the other side, and then go for a Dark Prince to pull back the Inferno Dragon. So, the Dark Prince on the right-hand side is going to force out Elixir, while the Bowler is not going to be enough to kill the Goblin Giant, so then we can go for a Lightning, and I think we win the game on the left-hand side, depending on what happens. Look at the Goblin Giant putting an excessive amount of work and putting our opponent out of the game. GG and well played, brother. Even if you have Electro Dragon for our Sparky deck and you've got Freeze to reset and stop our big push, you're never able to stop the dual lane spam. When your opponent's got a Lumberjack Balloon Freeze deck or a Golem deck with a whole bunch of heavy cost cards, Dark Prince in the other side is an extremely underrated play. And if they're overspending in the other side to try to stop your Sparky, well, they're gonna have nothing left over and they're gonna take a ton of damage. All right, so we got a game against someone with a Battle Healer and Musketeer in the banner. Maybe he's getting prepped for the Battle Healer buff and he's hyped up for it. So, he's not going to be cycling anything at the start. Maybe we can go and get it out of him if we go for a bar drill. Okay, cool. We got a Royal Ghost in the left-hand side, and now we're going to force out even more Elixir in the right-hand lane. And we get a little bit more of a clue on what our opponent's going to do after getting a bar drill. So, 
probably three musketeers because we see barbrill and then we also end up seeing a rail ghost most of the time it's not going to be pekka plus ram rider because it's not played near as often and three musketeers is a pretty popular card combination at top ladder so i think that this guy is copying it so the golden knight when it dashes it will dash onto the tower and it will stop dashing after it hits the tower unfortunately the sparky was in front so it was able to hit that as well I'm okay here though. I'm gonna go and drop a Goblin Giant a little bit further behind. I did take a thousand damage, but I have a huge Elixir advantage right now. He might go for three Musketeers, so I'm gonna get ready with the Lightning if he decides to drop that in the back. Yep, kind of felt like he would do that because that's what I would do. And I'm like, you know what? If I play three Musketeers and this guy is a pretty good player, he's likely gonna follow the similar pattern that I have. However, he doesn't have the knowledge that I do because he doesn't know what deck I'm playing and I know exactly what he's got. A lot of times Sparky won't have lightning, so you can surprise opponents that are typically easily able to defend in every single situation with the spontaneous lightning to shut down their defenses and ruin their day. Whether it's Electro Dragon or Three Musketeers, just get shocked by the lightning and then the opponent has no way of coming back. Yo, this guy's setting up a big Three Musketeer push, but he's going right into his Sparky, so I wonder how this is going to work out for him. I'm able to go in for a Barbarian Barrel here and then go Goblin Giant right after. And then just get a Dark Prince down on the left side where he's got a couple more of those piggies left over. And to be honest, it's a really fun game. Being able to spontaneously shut down your opponent's defenses that they're relying on super heavily means that you're going to steal the game right then and there. And when you've got such good defenses on the back end with your Hunter, Sparky, and Dark Prince, they're not going to be able to take the tower after you have a huge lead. So we got a game against someone with the Rascals banner. I feel like that's one of the most unique banners that I hardly ever see in the game. It would be pretty cool to play against someone that's running bait with Rascals because we got Dark Prince, Arrows, and Barbarrel. He's not revealing any of his cards, so we're going to force his hand with our Dark Prince. Generally, people will respond to a Dark Prince. They're not just going to let that thing fly. And, well, speaking of flying, I don't know if his Phoenix is going to fly for much longer either. I'm going to go for a Lightning here to obliterate the Phoenix Egg so the Dark Prince can still be strong and force out extra Elixir. If you guys didn't know, two Goblins that are split up are never something that you have to respond to. Because I was able to get a positive Elixir trade, ignoring the Goblins on the left-hand side, then I felt comfortable going in for the Lightning and taking as much damage as I possibly could from his tower. That's 420 damage every single time that you Lightning, and then going in for the Arrows will stack up 147. So you're effectively able to win games when your opponent's towers reach 567 health. And that's going to be our kill zone. That's where we want to get the tower to. And most Sparky decks are like, well, I have to break through with the Sparky shot at all points in time. That's not how this deck works. You have spell cycle power. So I'm going to go for arrows when the girl rascals reach a little bit higher so that I'm able to finish off the spear goblins, the rascal girls, and then, oh man, I wish that my unit stayed alive there, but they got assassinated by the goblins. I'm going to go in for a dark prince here to go and pull his goblins and then also the skeleton king. I think I'm in a pretty promising position. This graveyard deck that we're playing against, and yes, I know it's a graveyard deck because we've seen it way too often in the meta. I love playing against because the arrows are able to pierce through the Goblin Hut and hit the Rascals, and it's hard for them to space everything out. Oh my gosh, is the Dark Prince going to hit? I think so. Yo, that's massive damage. Dark Prince deals double damage with each shot, if you guys didn't know. I'm preferring to go in for the Phoenix on defense against the Skeletons. I don't know if this is the right play, but I think it is. The Hunter was able to get a shot still on the Phoenix and then also get some damage on top of the Skeletons, so I think it was in the perfect placement. Whereas the Phoenix, it attacks so fast that it individually is able to dissect all the Skeletons that we might have problems with. Because he overcommitted, I know he's going to have to go Rascals, so I don't want to go in for an Arrows just yet. In fact, I might not even want to go in for Arrows. Oh, wait! Never mind, he's not going to have Elixir for the Rascals. Let's go in, let's Arrows, let's get the Phoenix up close and personal. He's not going to have answers for this for a while. That Spear Goblin, Steven the Spear Goblin putting in the work. You got the hut, I got the single one, and I'm still causing way more trouble. I love as I said trouble, the Spear Goblin gave one last hit before he went off into oblivion. Okay, so we're able to go in for a Barbarian Barrel here and then a Dark Prince afterward. I think we're able to finish off the Girl Rascals, unless he wants to do something like that. Uh, <laughs> Causing a little bit more grief for me, not gonna lie. Hopefully the skeletons don't do too much damage to my tower. Oh my gosh, chill for a second, skellies. You didn't sign up for that, bro. That was way too much value. That was way too much sauce. So we gotta go for a hunter here and keep piling on the pressure. Obviously, it's gonna be a problem. He's gonna try to stop my goblin giant from crossing the river, but I can still wiggle one out. And then maybe go in for a bar bro afterward. The girl rascal on the left will deliver some damage, but I think he's gonna be so concentrated on defense that he's not really gonna be able to make any impactful strides on offense. 
So I'm going to go for an arrows here. Please, Goblin Giant, just lock into the tower. Deliver us a dominant W against this disgusting graveyard deck. And this guy was doing extremely optimal placements with the Goblin Huts at the end, spacing out his bait cards and never giving me too much value. Even in the dream world scenario, this guy can't do anything but dream of winning. The arrows pierce through the Goblin Huts, allowing the Goblin Giant to reach the tower and have a sweet taste of victory. And after that win, that puts us at 9,100 in the world. All right, we got a game against Thanatos. I really thought his name was going to be Thanos, and he finished top 600 in the world, so he's definitely going to be a pretty good player. Let's just roll through with the barbell and see what he's up to. Whenever I see Tombstone, I'm thinking Lava Hound or Graveyard. There's really no in-between. Also, you gotta be a bold player to go Tombstone first play, unless you have some good way of stopping the Mother Witch from just taking all of your skeletons and having a piggy farm. So, I'm gonna go in for a Phoenix, I think. It's just a bit safer than going in for a Sparky, because he could go for a Graveyard, and I just don't want to deal with that. Okay, never mind. He's gonna go in for the Skeleton King and Royal Giant right into a Sparky. We take those out of here! Let's go! Let's go, let's get it. That's huge. Because I'm pretty confident that I can go for arrows on all the skeletons. So the Sparky is going to be able to shoot on top of the Zappies, ideally. Okay, I was dreaming. I was living in a simulation. Eventually hit it, actually. So I wasn't living in a simulation. I was living in the future. Because I definitely first saw what was going to happen. So he's definitely going to go in for a Fisherman. Let's get him to go and pull the Goblin Giant instead of the Sparky. And then he'll probably go Goblin. So we're going to go in for Barbarian Barrel Surround Counter. Is he really not going to go Goblins? Does he not have it in the deck? I'm wondering what this guy's gonna do now. So we're gonna go in for a Dark Prince. That was probably the worst time Dark Prince I've ever done in my life because it lost its shield. But it was so eager to get in front of the Sparky and help out the team. Okay, can we beat a top 600 player? I would just like to win this match. Is that too much to ask for a game? Okay, cool. We're getting a bunch of damage. That's huge. Wow. And it even put it to like 77 uh, or lower than 77 health. So if I had Snowball or Zap or Log, that would finish off the tower. Unfortunately, I have Arrows, so that's a huge overkill. 147 damage is what we get, so that tower is definitely toast. Okay, you know what? You know what, dude? I'll just take it. I'll, I'll just take it, all right? Sure, if you want to go and spam a Mother Witch right next to your tower at low HP, you bet I'm going to spell it every time. Okay, so, hmm. Since he's got Fisherman... I fully expect him to start spamming aggressively because he feels comfortable with his situation. In fact, I know that I need to go for a Barbarian Barrel to be able to distract the Royal Giant counters. Because if he goes in for, like, the Fisherman, he's going to just pull the Barb Barrel instead of pulling the Dark Prince. <laughs> so 51 seconds. If I make one more defense against this Royal Giant, I 100% win. Wait, this guy's going to try to go in for a Skeleton King other side. That is one of the most interesting plays I've seen in a while. The fact that he's just going opposite lane and just completely ignoring everything else is interesting because... All I have to do is go in for arrows here, and then everything's dead. The Rail Giant is not going to do 3,000 damage, man. Excuse me. I don't know what you're thinking, but that's not going to happen. So as I said before, I just need to stop that one Rail Giant push. For whatever reason, he went in the right-hand side. He has no time left for the left-hand push either. So GG, and well played. You had one shot, and you blew it, sir. And we roll up the ranks onto the next game. And we're lightning our way up the leaderboards at 7,800 in the world. All right, so we've got a game against someone with an Electro Dragon, Baby Dragon, and Skeleton Dragon in their banner. Typically, the person that would be running this banner would love Lava Hounds, so... I'm going to go and play a little bit more passive and cycle Dark Prince in the back and not cycle my Hunter. Because if I don't have that in cycle against someone who likes Balloon, I'll be in for some serious trouble. Seriously, are we going to be playing against another Balloon player in a row? We just beat a Lumberjack Balloon player, and now we're playing against another one. Ridiculous how Clash Royale ends up just doing that to us. Oh no, he's going to have Mega Minion. I bet you it's going to be Golem. We're switching up and swerving, and we're running into some other menace. So if we're playing against a Golem deck... Ideally, what happens here is we're able to separate our stuff, or we're just going to immediately arrows on top of his bomber so it's not able to splash in on my Sparky. So fortunately for us, the Electro Dragon is going to be taking a lot of damage from the uh, Goblin Giant, but the problem here is the uh, Elite Barbarians and how much damage they're going to do. We're going to have to pull the E-Barbs utilizing our Hunter, and I also have to go for a Barbarrel to pull it even farther, because if I didn't, then I would lose my entire tower to the Elite Barbarians. So as you guys can see, that's the best defense I could work with. Unfortunately, the guy is also spamming even more stuff. He's never letting up. He is only wanting to get damage. Dark Prince, you're supposed to push the Lumberjack off the tower. Oh my goodness. Quite possibly the worst start I've had in a long time. I don't actually remember having a worst start with Sparky. Usually I take my opponent's towers in Single Elixir, and that's anything but. So we're going to see if we can mount a comeback. We're currently down... 3,300 damage, which is a pretty despicable place to be in, but I believe in our, the power of the Sparky, especially in the later stages of the game where I'm actually able to afford my lightning, then we're going to be able to make something happen with our Goblin Giant. So I don't care about my right-hand tower anymore. It's at 200 HP. It's not something I can really work with. 
Instead, I'm going to start to augment a huge push in the left-hand side with a Goblin Giant, a Sparky, and then I want to be able to afford a Lightning if he goes in for an Electro Dragon. But she should be back too soon. I really feel like he's going to try to Electro Dragon me. And then I can Lightning it. Let's go! He wasn't ready! And this is the power of Sparky with Lightning. People expect the Sparky not to be able to get the shot because they have an Electro Wizard, or they've got an Electro Dragon. But you swoop in with a Lightning and you rain in the pain. So I love that fact. Even, oh my gosh, Golming at the River? This guy has evolved. I've never seen people do that before. Like, randomly just Golming at the River when he's up. You know what? That's good for me. Even if you sack 8 Elixir to take a tower, I think we can stampede through with our Sparky, and I'm pretty confident that you're not able to stop this. Maybe you're going to prove me wrong, but this is my favorite thing to do with Sparky. Kiting the Leap Barbarians or other units that I hate right into the Sparky with my Goblin Giant or my Giant. Wait, did you guys see that? He tried to tornado the Goblin Giant back because he knew it was going to happen. He's like, dude, I'm not dealing with this. My e barbs don't want any part of Sparky Mutilation Day. And we're still finding a great way of just going through. I'm able to follow through with the Dark Prince tanking for my Sparky. And I've got a pseudo tank with the Phoenix. And it's really weird, but it's working. So generally when your opponent overcommits to take the tower, you want to just keep up the pressure and defend with your Sparky to destroy whatever units they overcommit with. And then, obviously, your counter-pushing units are going to give you a lot of value. We're going to arrows directly on top of the Lumberjack and then also finish off the rest of his uh, min Mega Minion. And then, hmm, I bet you he goes E-Barbs in the middle. Oh my gosh, it's like I have a sixth sense for these players. I know what Golem players do because Golem is one of my main decks in Clash Royale. So, I've seen a lot of Golem players play this type of way. I can go in for a Goblin Giant in the middle, but I'd rather go in for a Goblin Giant off to the right-hand side because I don't want both towers to start targeting it immediately. Especially if the flow of his Lumberjack and then also the uh, Bomber would go directly into it. Oh my gosh, the Phoenix Egg was delaying the Leap Barbarians! I don't know if you guys saw that, but the Phoenix Egg preoccupied, so then obviously he wasn't able to hit on top of the Goblin Giant. And the Goblin Giant, Shrek was just running away. I feel like we just ran away with an absolute... Huge positive trade. So we're able to hunter here for four elixir, be completely content with our position, and then follow up with arrows on the bomber, because that's two elixir for three. And then we also hit a whole bunch of other units with that arrows. So definitely a situation that I vibe with. I'm gonna go goblin giant to go and kite his units the other side, fully expecting him to go in for a e-barb soon, and I'm gonna barb barrel and I'm gonna lightning on that. And that captivates them and crushes them. So he's not gonna keep those alive. The barb barrel is then gonna tank. I can then go in for a Phoenix because I'm pretty sure that the Electro Dragon will retarget onto that soon. And the Spear Goblins are going to stay alive. I wonder if the Spear Goblins do enough damage. They should lock on a tower. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Clutch victories against Golem feel so freaking good. And it's all because we've got Lightning for their Electro Dragon. Other Sparky decks will get destroyed in this situation, but Sparky Lightning stands strong. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest of your day.